Hey everybody, welcome to Techmark Gaming. In today's video, I'm going to be playing and reviewing PlayStation's most highly anticipated game of the year, which is Astrobot. On top of that, I'll be unboxing and giving my first impressions on a limited edition Astrobot controller so you guys can see how it looks and how it performs during gameplay. Furthermore, for the gamers that like the game on the go using remote play, I'm going to use the DualSense controller with my iPad Pro and I'm going to see how it performs on the PlayStation Portal to see if there's any difference. Now, before I get into the video, be sure to smash that like button, comment below and tell me if you guys have Astro Bot or if you play Astro's Playroom and subscribe to Techmark Gaming if you haven't already so I can be recommended to more gamers like yourself. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is unbox the limited edition DualSense controller. So if you want to know what's inside the box, then I got you. So after we remove the cover, you'll be greeted with a all white box. All you have to do is pull open the tab and you can see that we have a DualSense controller. I'm going to put that to the side. And as you guys can see, we have a DualSense wireless controller guide. So if you want to know how to work that, you still can. And to my surprise, that is the only thing left inside the box, which means that we can take a look at the DualSense controller. So as you guys can see, this is a really, really great looking controller. In my opinion, I really wasn't expecting it to look so well put together and if we take a look at the hand grips we have some new material which is like some type of glossy candy paint type of look that really complements the whole controller and it looks like astrobot and if we take a look at the buttons you can see that the outlines are baby blue which is pretty cool and if we take a look at the faceplate at the bottom of the controller you can see that we have some additional grooves which gives more character to the DualSense controller and you can't beat that now if you were looking at the thumbstick like me then you can see that we have a smudge aka a nick and i'm not sure what is going on maybe it's a defect i'll try to look past it but if i can't i'm gonna go ahead and contact sony and see if they can get me a newer controller other than that, I like having the white thumbsticks, the white PlayStation button, they look really cohesive. And if we take a look at the back of the controller, you can see that we have a Astrobot logo. This looks pretty cool in my opinion, just because it gives it more character compared to my other DualSense controllers. On top of that, you get all white R1 and R2 buttons. So that is pretty cool. It looks really nice with the controller. And I kind of wish they gave us the option to have this on the original DualSense controller that comes with the PS5. And moving along, the track pad is one of my favorite additions to this controller just because they have the two astrobot eyes on there a lot of people are complaining just because they want to have this being a digital trackpad in my honest opinion that will drive up the cost and it just seems like that's a completely different controller maybe on the playstation 6 we'll get something like that now if we compare this to the original DualSense controller you can see that we have a lot more customizations on the hand grips the texture is a little bit more different just because there's a glass coating at the front of the controller the buttons and the trackpad has more customization when i turn both controllers around you can see that the original DualSense controller has darker text compared to the astrobot limited edition DualSense controller now, if you're like me and you want to use this controller, what we have to do first is update it. So I'm going to grab a USB-C cable and I'm going to put the USB-C cable inside of my PlayStation 5 and I'm going to plug it into my controller and you'll be greeted with a screen that says updated. All we're going to do is choose update and you should go through the process. And as simple as that, we should now be ready to play Astrobot. If you're like me and you have a gaming monitor, in most cases you don't have speakers attached to it. And I want to show you exactly how the Astrobot experience is. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab my Airfly Pro dongle and I'm going to pair it up with my Bose SoundLink Mini. And as simple as that, you guys can see that they're both paired. And I'm going to plug the dongle into the back of my monitor so it can transmit the signal to my speaker. And before every gaming session, I like to stay hydrated with water using my 18 ounce Yeti flask. And the best part about it is that it's insulated and and I don't have to leave my game set up in order to refill. It's kind of like a shameless plug, but I highly recommend that all my gamers out there stay hydrated and stay healthy so we can all experience these new games together. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link in the description. Now I'm going to play Astrobot the Deluxe Edition on my PlayStation 5. And the reason I chose this over the standard version is just because we get more outfits and we get more soundtracks and just different avatars. So if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave an article down below if you guys want to see the differences between the standard and the Deluxe Edition. Now I'm not going to ruin it too much, but hey, the opening scene is pretty crazy. Whoever came up with the storyline of having an alien come and rip the PlayStation 5 apart and taking some of the Astrobot team members and you know abducting them so honestly this is a really fun and just you know 
a really good way to just kick back and enjoy a storyline without it being too serious. And just like Astrobot, if you played that before, you have a lot more interactions with the DualSense controller. And the crazy part is I have the exact same DualSense controller that they have in the game. All you have to do is shake it to get it out the sand. And I gotta say the animations are top tier. The vibrations and haptics feel absolutely amazing when just running through the sand or, you know, jumping up, interacting with different objects is definitely a game changer because there's a lot of animations and just haptics and vibrations that go along with the whole experience. So honestly, you can't really be mad at this game. I'm also a big fan of the progression system. So as you guys can see, we have a storyline where you just go to different planets, making sure that you collect items and rescue different astrobots. Now, once you go into each planet, you will have a introduction screen where it's showing you the scenery, the environment, and all of the elements that you could possibly come across when you're trying to complete this mission. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and sit back and let you guys see how this performs on the PlayStation 5. As you guys can see, this is a really interactive game. Just jumping into water and just interacting with the elements really make you feel like you're a part of the experience. And the attention to detail is insane. As you guys can see, the fire from my jetpack is cutting the wood logs, which is absolutely insane. I actually just tried this out randomly just to see if it will work. And look, somebody thought about it, so shout out to them. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to smash that like button and comment below and tell me how far you got in this game or if you plan on purchasing it in the future. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Techmark Gaming so I can be recommended to more gamers like yourself. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get back into the video. I'm gonna be playing Astrobot on two remote play devices. The first one is gonna be on my M2 iPad Pro, and that's gonna be paired up with the limited edition Astrobot DualSense controller. Then I'm gonna play on a PlayStation Portal to see if there's any difference. Now for this use case, you guys can see that I have a dual charger for the DualSense controller and the PlayStation Portal. They have two charger indicators to let you know when they're fully charged, and it has a RGB lighting system. In this clip, I didn't have it turned on, sadly, but this is a really great stand. And if you guys are interested in charging both of your devices at the same time, I'll leave a link in the description. And to enhance my remote play experience at home, I also picked up an Asus Mesh Node, which is gonna help extend the Wi-Fi range to dead zones in the house. I'm currently working on a step-by-step -step guide showing you how to set this up properly so once that video is uploaded i'll leave a card in the top right corner of this video and a link in the description moving along we're going to see how this performs on the ipad pro i'm gonna go ahead and resume and go to the next planet and the first thing that i noticed is that there was no vibrations that's really a downside with remote playing on the ipad with the dual sense controller now i did notice that the haptic triggers did work so, you know, it still gave you a little bit of immersion, but there is definitely that big factor of no vibrations in a controller that's really hindering the experience in my opinion. Now, when it comes down to graphics and resolution, I noticed that there was a downgrade in quality just because we're playing in 720p and they don't enable 1080p sadly on the iPad Pro or any other remote play devices excluding the PlayStation Portal. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and sit back and let you guys experience this for yourself, so enjoy.
Finally, I'm going to go ahead and resume this on the PlayStation portal. So as you guys can see, I'm going to go ahead and progress to the next planet. And honestly, the first thing that I notice is that the vibrations and the haptic triggers are back. Every animation that you see on the screen, you can literally feel it in the palm of your hands. It feels like you're holding a DualSense controller that's paired up with the actual PlayStation 5. So this controller is literally a PlayStation 5 on the go. As long as you have a stable internet connection, you should be all good to go. And the second thing that I really noticed noticed about the PlayStation Portal is that we're streaming at 1080p and this screen looks really solid and clear. I don't see any crazy micro stuttering or lags, mostly due to that Asus mesh node that I just told you guys about. The signal has been on point and the portal is performing like butter. On top of that, I also do have some really great thumb grips. As you guys can see, the analog sticks have a really great texture to it and it's helping me maneuver my character and I can get done with the mission a lot more quicker. With that being said, I'm going to sit back and let you guys see how this performs on the PlayStation Portal, which is chef's kiss, but I'm going to let you guys experience it for yourself. Overall, this is a really great experience, no matter if you're playing on the PlayStation 5 or on the PlayStation Portal or any other remote play devices. It's all up to you and your personal preference. This is a really great game that I think all PlayStation 5 owners should own just so they can see the full potential inside of the DualSense controllers. If you found this video valuable, be sure to smash that like button and comment below and tell me if you plan on playing AstroBot or if you plan on picking it up in the future. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so I can be recommended to more gamers like yourself. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Deuces.